Right, welcome back to uh, part 7 yeah, of chapter 3, okay, clip number 7. Okay, we were looking at yeah, uh, putting these formulas okay, on the diagram that we have seen earlier. Yeah? So this is the change in assets as we have seen here. Okay, so the change in assets, if it's the change in sales is given, so this is how you compute the change in assets. If the growth in sales is given, G, then you compute the change in assets this way. Yeah? This is simply the assets, uh, spontaneous assets at time 0 multiplied by G. Yeah? Alright, therefore, next, yeah, we, we look at the next step. Okay, the next step is here. Right, and yeah? this is to uh, compute the change in spontaneous liability. Yeah? Now this change in spontaneous liability, if you are given the change in sales, you compute it this way, as you can see. Uh, spontaneous liability divided by sales multiplied by the change in sales, yeah? Or if you are given the growth rate in sales, let me just uh, bring it down slightly so that you can see. Right, yeah? Alright, so you get uh, the formula is to be this way, yeah? This is the formula the change in spontaneous, sorry, the spontaneous liability at time zero, the uh, present, yeah, uh, spontaneous liability multiplied by the growth rate in sales, yeah, right, so this is the internal financing, this is the internal financing, okay, internal funding, okay, and then you have, this is the spontaneous financing, then you have the external financing policy, yeah, so here, external financing, when you say strictly external, then this involves only these two elements, yeah? which is change in non-spontaneous liability and this change in common stock. So you can borrow using debt, notes payable or long-term debt, for example, or you can issue new shares. Yeah? So uh, And then there is yeah, the sale of fixed assets and reduction of cash. Yeah? Uh, this element is not Okay, that we see here, yeah. This change in non-spontaneous asset will be another source of funding. Yeah, this is not external funding. Okay, strictly speaking, it's not internal funding, and it's also not spontaneous. Yeah, but you can obtain some funding from selling your fixed assets or in reducing your cash, yeah, cash holding. So this can also provide some funding. Yeah, and this should also be added to this. Yeah. Okay, so this change in liabilities and equity, or this would be reflected here, yeah, in change in assets, for example, yeah. But the bottom line is these two must be equal, right? So this is how these formulas stack up, yeah, when you put them together, and this is illustrated in this diagram, yeah. Now let's look at applying this yeah, EFN formula to the same example, Tasha Toy Emporium. Yeah, you're given this. Sales level now is 5,000. The growth rate in sales is 10%. This is given yeah, earlier. We don't need all the information. We don't need the financial statements. Yeah? We don't need the income statement and the balance sheet. Yeah? We just need some crucial items like this. Yeah? You need these six pieces of information. With this, you can compute the external financing needed. Yeah? So the third element that is required is the uh, spontaneous assets yeah, level now, uh, which is the total assets. Yeah? We, we don't consider uh, spontaneous and non-spontaneous. We assume that the company, Tasha Toy Emporium, has no non-spontaneous assets. Yeah? Right. Therefore, here, the uh, total assets will be your uh, spontaneous assets. Yeah? So, it will be 11,500. This is from the balance sheet, yeah? total assets. That's now, yeah. Then the spontaneous liability will be the accounts payable, which is 900. Net income from the current income statement is 1185. Yeah? This is given in the income statement, and the dividend payout ratio is given as 40 percent. Yeah, okay. Now, the formula is this, okay, this formula is used rather than, uh, this is equation number 10, yeah, we use this equation rather than equation number 8, 
Why? Because here the sales is given, the growth in sales is given, yeah? not the absolute change in sales. Yeah? Therefore, we use this formula. Right? Let's just, uh, let me get the pointer. Yeah? The pointer is not very obvious here. Alright, yeah, note this. So this you just replace yeah these figures into this formula. Alright, so 1150 this is the assets here multiplied by 10% growth in uh, sales minus uh, spontaneous liability 900 multiplied by 10% uh, growth in sales minus yeah this is the retained earnings, this portion retained earnings will be net income 1185 multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate 10% multiplied by 1 minus the dividend payout ratio which is 40% yeah so you have got this therefore this is the answer yeah, that you get this is 1150 this is the increase in assets yeah this is the increase financing need yeah due to the increase in assets and from this $90 will be provided by spontaneous financing which is the increase in accounts payable and another $782.10 will be provided by the retained earnings. Yeah? After paying dividends, the income which is retained will give you $782.1. Yeah? So the remainder, okay, which is 277.90, which is rounded to the nearest dollar, 278, will be your external financing needed. This is the total financing. These two, yeah go halfway to meet this that means some portion yeah of this financing is met by these two elements the remaining yeah element of 278 must come from other sources okay and this is exactly the same uh, answer yeah, that we got with uh, using pro forma financial statement yeah, earlier for Tosh uh, tasha toy emporium okay so this is a more efficient method yeah to obtain yeah, this EFN, if, you, if your uh, interest or you need only to determine the external financing needed, then you don't need to do a full financial plan. Yeah, okay, you can use this formula to get the external financing needed. Okay, so that's the idea. Yeah, now we look at uh, relaxing yeah, some of the conditions or assumptions that we have assumed earlier. Yeah. Now, the, one of the assumptions in using the EFN formula or in doing this pro forma financial statement is that uh, we assume that the company that we are forecasting for is operating at full capacity. Okay, Full capacity, the implication is uh, if you want to increase sales, since you are now operating at full capacity, if you want to increase sales or if there's going to be an increase in sales you cannot achieve that by having the same level of assets yeah? because the assets are fully utilized now yeah? to full capacity it's being used so you cannot generate more sales with using the same level of assets so if you want to increase sales then there must be an increase in assets that's the idea behind full capacity yeah now uh, previously, the assumption was the company is operating at full capacity. But if it is not, yeah, many companies may have excess capacity, yeah, meaning they have uh, currently more fixed assets now than what they need, yeah, because they anticipate that the sales will increase in the future. And therefore, they start building the capacity now. Yeah? They don't use the capacity, but they uh, plan to use it in the near future. Alright, so let's suppose okay, that the company that we are looking at, Tasha Toy Emporium, is operating at 80% capacity. Yeah? If you are given this, the first step is always to compute the full capacity sales. Yeah? How do you compute that? Yeah? You take the current level of sales divided by the capacity, the current capacity uh, in percentage. Yeah? So it is 5,000 divided by 80%, so you get... Uh, six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars this is in dollars yeah so what is the implication of this this means that as long as the sales is less than six thousand two hundred and fifty okay the company need not increase its fixed assets okay but if the fixed assets is uh, I mean sorry the the sales is more than this okay let's say seven thousand dollars yeah it would move from five thousand to seven thousand dollars 
then the existing yeah, fixed assets will not be enough to support the new level of sales. Okay, so that's the implication. Yeah. Now, do you, you want to see whether the sales, uh, expected sales, yeah, the new sales is greater than or less than this full capacity sales. Yeah. So therefore, the estimated sales is 5,500. Why is this 5,500? This is 10% higher than the current level of sales. Yeah. So you find that this 5,500 is still lower than your 6,250. Yeah? Meaning that you can achieve this level of sales by using the same level of fixed assets. You don't have to increase your fixed assets. That's the idea behind this. Yeah? And you are told that here you would still be operating at 88% capacity. How do you compute this? This is the uh, new level of sales. Okay. The new level of sales, 5,500, which is this, divided by the full capacity sales, which is 6,250. Yeah? So you get 88%. So here, because it is still not above 100%, okay, that means you don't need uh, uh, extra capacity, you don't need to buy new fixed assets. Therefore, there's no additional fixed assets yeah, required. Therefore, now, how do you forecast the uh, assets need. Yeah? So there's no change in the income statement. Yeah? The income statement remains the same. But the total assets, yeah, now the increased level of total assets will now be less. Yeah? Notice this. this is the new level of current assets, 7150. Plus this is the existing yeah, fixed assets. Fixed assets is 5000 now. So in the future it will also be 5000 because the increased level of sales can be attained without the increase in fixed assets. So fixed assets remains the same. Yeah? Therefore, the total of these two is 12,150. Yeah? But if you look at the liabilities and owner's equity portion, if you go back to the balance sheet, yeah? the forecasted yeah? liabilities and equity uh, value at, at the end of next year or 2019, you find that this is 12,372, yeah? which is higher than this. Okay, assuming that the uh, three components do not change, yeah? meaning the long-term debt, notes payable, long-term debt, and common stock do not change. Yeah? So you find that there is an excess capacity of $222. Okay? Now this can be demonstrated by using or by looking at the uh, looking at this, yeah? this uh, Excel. Yeah? table right yeah let's look at this yeah now what we did earlier was this change in fixed assets note this yeah it was 5000 earlier and we assume that the company is operating at full capacity therefore an increase of 10% in sales must be uh, must be supported yeah by an increase in net fixed asset by also 10% so this increases by 10% but now you are told that the company is operating at 80% capacity. Okay, so it means that there is no need for an increase in assets. Yeah? So we reduce this to 5,000. No more 5, 500. Yeah? Just 5,000 here. Yeah? So this is exactly the same as this. No increase here. Yeah? There is no increase here. Let's say we delete this here. Yeah? No increase because of uh, the company operating at less than full capacity. Yeah? Now this becomes 12,150, this is the total asset increase, yeah? because there will be an increase in current assets, but no increase in fixed assets. And therefore, this will be 12,150, but note this, yeah? the EFN becomes negative. Negative here means the company has excess financing. Yeah? That means this total here, okay, this total here is more than the total here. Yeah? Because you have uh, uh, financing from spontaneous sources and you also have internal sources. Your retained earnings go up by 782, yeah? your retained profit. So even though these three do not change, okay, you find that these two sources yeah, give you more than adequate, more than enough financing. Yeah? So you have additional financing of $222. 
So this $220 surplus can be repaid.